Soil is the raw material from which most food is produced. This makes it a precious resource. But how much do producers understand the impact that their activities have on the very structure of soils? Chris Duller, an extension officer with Dairyco, has been presenting information at events throughout the UK on this topic. So what's his first message to dairy producers so they can better understand soils? I think the first thing is for them to recognise how important the soils are to their whole business. Um, poor soil structure will impact on how much grass you can grow, the quality of that grass. It will also affect how many days your cows can be outside actually grazing without making a mess. Um, a good lay with good grass can produce 10 tonne of dry matter a year. If you have soil compaction, that could be down at six or seven. So all of a sudden, it could be costing you, let's say, 60, 70 pound an acre. It's, an, it's a hidden cost. Nobody arrives on the yard with a bill for the cost of your soil compaction. And it's something that can creep up on farmers without them really recognising. So is it all about improving production, really? Production is one element. The other big thing about soils is their impact on the environment. Um, Poorly managed soils with poor structure will have higher potential losses of runoff um, and also higher losses of nitrous oxide. If you've got a wet soil, it will convert your nitrate rather than into plant available into, into nitrous oxide. So yes, there are environmental benefits as well of having decent soils. So Chris, what exactly is the farmer looking for in the soil? When we dig a hole, the basics I'm looking for to start with um, are colour of the soil, anything that's grey, anything that's mottled and has got red iron oxide, rust deposits, a sign of temporary waterlogging, which is always a bad sign in soil. I'm also looking for the smell of the soil. A good, healthy soil smells earthy. Um, a poor, stagnant soil with no air in it will smell like a rotten silage, very butyric, very nasty. So yeah, the basics, colour and smell. Then I'm looking to see things like rooting depth. How far down are my roots extending? I'd like to see roots down six, seven, eight inches deep. Um, they can access then lots of moisture, lots of nutrients. If all my root mass is in the top inch and a half, two inches, I'm in problems. I'm then looking for cracking in the soil. Anything that's vertical is a good sign. Anything that starts breaking horizontally is a bad sign, an indication of a pan layer. I also want to see what sort of size of aggregates I've got. These blocks are quite hard to break up. Worms can't penetrate, roots struggle to penetrate. There's a lot of soil in there that is inaccessible to both your plants um, and to worms and bacteria and the like. So anything blocky is bad. I'd like the soil to break up nice and crumbly. Um, I say here we have got some quite big lumps as we get down two or three inches deep. Bad sinus compaction at about four inches deep. What about the amount of organic matter and activity in the soils? For most dairy units there's plenty of organic matter in the system. Um, basically there's a lot of slurry going back onto land. It's not the amount of organic matter that's crucial, it's the turnover, the breakdown of that organic material that can be a problem in many units. In order to get nutrient cycling and, and breakdown of slurry we need either bacteria in decent populations or earthworms, ideally both. Um, I've dug a hole here and I've got not many worms, I've got about 20 here. It's quite dry, a lot of them are at depth. But all these guys are involved in breaking down material at the surface and taking material to depth as well. As they take it to depth, they create nice channels that roots and drainage water to move down as well. They're crucial to a healthy soil, a decent earthworm population. So how can farmers avoid damaging their soils? If you do decide to use a machine to correct soil compaction, it's really important that you dig a hole whilst you're doing it to see exactly what the machine's doing. So I've dug a hole behind the sward lifter here to see how deep I'm going. Is it actually doing the job I want to do? How much soil am I moving? If ground conditions aren't right, you'll either smear the, the uh, soil as you drag the leg through, or else you might not crack enough. It's an expensive business. You only want to do it if soil conditions are right, or else you can do more damage than good. So it's important. Do 10 yards, dig a hole, see what you're doing, and then carry on and do the rest of it, doing a good job. So if the soil has been damaged, how can it be repaired? The farmer's got three main options to correct soil compaction. Um, if the sward isn't in very good condition, one option would be to plough. Um, as long as you're ploughing to below the depth of compaction, it should solve all the problems. Um, if there's a surface compaction and the sward is fairly good, one option would be going with a, a soil aerator. That's a roller with blades attached that penetrate about four or five inches. Um, if the compaction is deeper than that, then you mainly think about subsoiling. Um, the machine we've got here, a sward lifter, is designed to go into a, an existing sward and lift below the compaction zones, um, increasing the drainage potential of the soil. Chris, maize causes a particular problem with the soil structure. What is that? The issues with maize 
are really driven by the fact that a lot of operations take place at the shoulders of the year, so we're cultivating wet soils often and also harvesting in wet conditions, especially where we have continuous maize, I mean, maize year after year, any problems you create in terms of wheel marks and plough pans can just be exacerbated, problems get worse and worse. The problem then we have is soil runoff. Um, if you've got compacted layers, you end up with soil moving across the top. Um, the other issue is that maize is, is a lazy plant. Um, the roots here, hopefully, will extend down to beyond a foot. If I've got compaction layer at six, seven inches, they'll just stop. The net result being that we have a very poor and a very expensive maize crop. Um, I've dug a hole here. What I'm really concerned about is here at the cultivation depth. Um, if we do plan a wet time, we create a, a plough pan that, that the maize roots can't penetrate. Um, I'm also worried about the amount of slurry that's gone onto this crop. It's all been ploughed down to this layer um, and it acts as a barrier to the crop as well. What I'd like to see is this field certainly subsoiled after harvest if the window is, is there this year to try and remove this big blocky structure below the plough pan.